One of the most common complications following an allogeneic transplant is graft-versus-host disease, or GVHD. Graft-versus-host disease is a condition that can occur following an allogeneic transplant in which some of the donor cells attack the patient's tissue or organs. In other types of transplants, such as a kidney transplant, the recipient's immune system may look at the kidney as foreign and try to reject the kidney. In an allogeneic stem cell transplant, the donor's stem cells look at the tissue and organs of the recipient and see this new home, or host, as foreign. The donor's white blood cells can attack its new foreign environment. When this happens, the patient has graft versus host disease. The time of onset and the severity of GVHD can vary. While some GVHD can be helpful, severe cases can greatly impact quality of life and life expectancy. There are two types of GVHD, acute and chronic. Acute GVHD usually appears soon after the transplant, a few weeks to months after receiving the donor cells. Chronic GVHD can appear months to years after the transplant and can have a sudden or gradual onset. Acute GVHD can affect the skin, liver, and gastrointestinal system. Acute GVHD symptoms can appear rapidly and need to be communicated to your transplant team right away. Skin rash, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea are common symptoms of acute GVHD. Treatment depends on the severity of your symptoms and may include rehospitalization. While many cases of acute GVHD can be controlled, some do not respond to treatment and can lead to death. A delay in reporting symptoms can make it harder to control GVHD. Your case manager will discuss when to call with you just prior to your transplant. Chronic GVHD can appear more gradually and can affect any organ system. Skin tightening or hardening, dry, gritty eyes, mouth sores, or taste changes, and lung changes resulting in shortness of breath are common forms of chronic GVHD. Uncontrolled chronic GVHD can affect your overall quality of life. Symptoms of chronic GVHD can appear after you've returned home from your transplant. You will be given a binder containing detailed information about GVHD symptoms. It will be important to review this information when you return home so you can monitor for changes and communicate them to your transplant team. Medication is an important part of your treatment plan. You will be started on medication before the infusion of the donor cells to prevent GVHD. The medications are referred to as immunosuppressants. The medications work by suppressing your new immune system so that it does not recognize your body as foreign. The goal is for the donor cells or graft and the patient's tissues, the host, to develop a tolerance for one another. In addition, if graft versus host develops, medications may be changed or added. Your doctor may also recommend participation in a clinical trial to treat your GVHD symptoms. Due to the medications used to prevent and treat GVHD, allogeneic transplant patients are at increased risk for infection. Your plan of care will include medications to help prevent some types of infections. These medications are necessary until you are off all immunosuppressive therapy. The duration of immunosuppressive therapy can vary from six months to lifelong. In the three months follow post-transplant, after the patient leaves the hospital, there is a chance of more side effects happening, typically from either graft-versus-host disease or infections that may make the patient get sick or feel sick again. Um, there's about 10% chance that patients may need to go back to the hospital for one of these complications. Uh, the good news is majority of the times, again, nine out of 10, these stays are short and um, patients do get better. So from the patient perspective, I would say the first three months after transplant is where more most of the action or most of uh, well i feel weak i'm not as good as uh, strong as i used to i'm not as robust in appetite as i used to i i don't um, i can't do the things i used to do before transplant most of the times and i can't for sure say it's all the time that this rough patch is the three months post transplant including the hospital stay uh, that's probably true in 90% of the cases. My GVH was in my stomach and my skin. I think it showed up in my skin first, but it was kind of just like a rash, and so I figured it was 
nothing and then they biopsied it and said it was GVH and then the stomach was very painful too and so they put me on steroids and for a couple I think it was a little over a year and that cleared it up and I've been good of that since. After the transplant I started feeling better and then <laughs> I started not feeling so great again. I got a bit of graft versus toast in my mouth and then it went to my throat so I had to do meds um, via IV instead of taking them orally and so there were some days that were pretty rough but I had a great support system. The staff at Nebraska Medicine is so amazing. Um, that's one thing that we were told before transplant was let your nurses, let your caretakers know anything that is, you know, even if you don't think it's that big a deal. And they were right on top of everything.